There you go. That's the way it's supposed to fit. Nice. You're pretty fucking cool. Are you strutting and swaggering now? She's tried. <laughs> hey. <laughs> There's a walk. There we go. <laughs> Do you feel taller? A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they feel they feel right. I see Lisa didn't give you too undershot of a heel. Hey, she shaped her own heel. I did that. Oh, did you? Yeah. Okay. All I did was help her fit the last. Yeah, I wanted one that was pretty straight yeah. because I said that and she was like, like a shoe? Yeah, yeah kind of like a shoe. Called the small pair of cowhide, and I basically just cut it apart, made everything line up. I had to piece together some pieces, make all the pieces run together, all the furs going the same way, and everything lines up. This middle stripe right here is in the very middle of the hide. It's going down the driver's seat the console. And you put a little stripe down the center thing. It's definitely thick leather. It's probably the thickest leather I've ever worn. Did you get all hairy working with it? Yes, there's hair everywhere. I feel like I've been given hair cuts for a week. For my video this month, I'm going to talk about how the curved needle works and run through how it's threaded and also show you how I splice the thread. First of all, in case you're wondering, yes, there's supposed to be a thing like this that the thread sits on, but I just don't have any luck with those. I don't know why. It's probably me, but the thread always hangs up as it's coming off, and it feels like it's this is too close to this, and I hate these. So I went to the hardware store and bought a bolt that was the same size, so it would screw into that same hole. Like this and now I just put my thread on there so the first thing I'm gonna do is just cut it off because I'm going to splice in the white and pull it through and then the machine will be threaded with white thread without me having to actually rethread the machine this always seems kind of lazy to me because I remember the first time I got a serger Everyone always said, oh, sergers are impossible to thread. They're so hard to thread. Don't ever unthread it. Just tie on and pull it through. So the first thing I did when I needed to change the thread on my serger was just cut all the threads off. Because I was not going to own a machine that I didn't know how to thread. Okay, so what I was doing while I was talking about the serger was just using the tip of an awl to separate all the little cords that make up the thread no matter what kind of thread that you're using in your curved needle. I used to use cant strand and now I'm using a braided thread from Italy that's one millimeter in diameter. That's what I sell and it comes in all sorts of different colors which is fun. Anyway, they're all composed of lots of different smaller threads. And what I'm doing is separating it into two. The most obvious way to tie on is to just make one big knot and then pull it through the machine and then you have a new colored thread on. The problem is the thread runs through a rubber stripper. It's about the size of the end of your thumb and it's black rubber. I thought I had one to show you but I don't. And if you pull one big knot through that rubber stripper, it opens up the hole too much and then the stripper never functions like it's intended, which is to help clean off some of the excess thread lube or thread wax. 
the way I avoid that is I do two knots. And that's the reason I'm splitting it here. So I've got both of them with a Y. And I'm just going to take the thread. And here I'm going to make a knot that's right up near the end of where the white splits. So there I've got a knot. And now I'm going to switch hands. I'm going to put the red in my left hand and the white in my right and do one more pass around. And doing that keeps it from pulling off when I pull it through. There's probably a word in knot terminology for switching like that. But I don't know what it is. And then I'm just going to cut off the excess so it doesn't get in my way. That knot I put right up next to the where the white split and this one I'm going to put right up next to where the red splits. And that way they're not side by side. So basically all I'm doing is creating two smaller knots that aren't right next to each other. so that they'll feed through that stripper. The knots are a little bit bigger than the diameter of the thread, but not too much, and they're not side by side. Okay, first we're gonna talk about how the thread runs through the machine. This is the wax pot, or the thread loom pot. So the thread comes up from underneath, through here, and then right in here is that rubber stripper that I was telling you about. It feeds around this wheel twice, and then make sure when it comes out the other side, the, the thread that's coming up is to the left, and the thread that's heading upwards into the machine is on the right-hand side. It's going to come up off the wheel on the right-hand side, not the left-hand side. Come up off the wheel and go around this little wheel right here. The best way to thread it is to have yourself a metal bristle that you can bend into a curve and that's the only way you can really fish that thread through there easily. It's going to go around that one and then come down. This one is harder to get it around that wheel because this locks right up tight against it. But if you pay attention, as you roll the machine over, at some point it moves away from that wheel. It drops down away from it. So at that point, you can snug the thread in and pull it up tightly into this wheel. And then it's going to go up and around into this one. Again, it's handy to have a bristle so that you can feed it through. And then down and around this one. This is the one that moves. It comes up and goes through the thread looper and then up through the plate. All right, now we're going to see if we can pull. We're going to see if we can pull the thread through. There's always a moment where you're afraid it's going to break. Come on, there you go. And then it won't usually feed through the thread looper. You have to cut it off right there. Okay, here's how a stitch works. The awl comes up and pokes the hole. At the same time, the thread hook is grabbing the thread and pulling it backwards so that it will be taut as the thread looper comes around, bringing the thread right in front of the needle, just at the place where the needle's barb can catch the thread and bring it up, and now the thread lifter can grab the thread and bring it up so that it can be caught by the bobbin and brought around and make the stitch. Dale and I just went to a show in Philadelphia for Dale's business and when we arrived at the registration table there was a jar with candy in it and there was another jar next to it with something mysterious in it. And I always want to know what things are, and especially if they're edible. So I went bopping up there, and I said, what is this? And they said, it's candy. So I took one, 
and then I didn't know what to do with it. This is what they looked like. Little flying saucers. And they feel like cardboard. I took one of these candies and I was too embarrassed to ask how to eat it. So I tried biting it, but it felt like cardboard. And then I was too embarrassed to be seen eating cardboard. So I went over to a corner and ripped it and sugar fell out. And then I was embarrassed about getting sugar on the carpet. So I just threw it away. I brought four of them home. I've told Morgan that she's going to be video doing something, but I haven't told her what. As promised, I brought you home a gift from Philadelphia. Okay, here you go. What, what are these? Can I eat them? Are they edible? Okay, I'm being like really brave here. Mom, did you lie to me? I don't know, try it. If you make me eat plastic packaging things. There's sour stuff inside this. Put it all in your mouth and just let it melt. Mom, that's too wild. Go for it. It seriously tastes like cardboard for the first few seconds. Oh, no, no, that's Motown. Okay, okay, that wasn't so bad, but like the first few seconds are unbearable. Really? Mm. Yeah, where you're just convinced you're eating those, those little packaging peanuts. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I'm only being this brave because there's a camera and that means you'll have proof of how whiny I normally am. It really is exactly like packaging peanuts. Oh. Once it dissolves, it tastes sugary. And it's so... I mean, it's not terrible. It's just sour. And it still tastes a little bit like melted packaging peanuts. What's that stuff made of? It tastes like styrofoam. Like you're just chewing on styrofoam. I don't want to eat this you one. Can, you can take this one with you today and give it to someone. I don't hate anyone that much. Are you sure? <laughs> I you can't think of anyone in the town of Guthrie. <laughs> it's a small town. I'm not going to name names. I know better than that, Mother. <laughs>